Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, um, it keeps happening. Yep, uh, more links apparently, and uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a card that's apparently from the main set or a card that's apparently from one of the pre-cons. Uh, Wizards is leaking cards left and right, and um, again, like all these other leaks, I will say, uh, just take everything I say with a grain of salt, okay? Because this is a leak. I have not seen this officially confirmed by Wizards, and uh, I don't think it's going to be until it actually is revealed, probably whenever they do the pre-cons. That being said, yeah, this looks incredibly legitimate to me. We've seen other leaks like this in the past that have been, well, not fakes. This doesn't look like a fake to me, so we shall see. Regardless, uh, yeah, let's break this card down with my custom version of the card. Of course, thank you, MTG.Design. You're a fantastic website, and I love you. Here we go. Lord of the Nazgul, a 4-3 Wraith Noble with flying that costs three blue black. Wraiths, you control protect from ring bearers, so that's pretty interesting. We'll get back to that here in a second. But more importantly, whenever you cast an insert or sorcery spell, create a 3-3 three, three black Wraith creature token with menace. Then if you control nine more Wraiths, Wraiths, you control a base power toughness, Nine, nine until end of turn. So this is incredibly flavorful and incredibly impactful. My goodness. Um, yeah, you're going to be hitting for a lot of damage. I mean, <laughs> first of all, hey, a token generator on instant sorceries. Yeah, it's reminiscent of some other very, very popular commanders out there that we'll talk about here in a little bit, maybe. But uh, also, hey, um, here's the thing. You can make a lot of 3-3s three that, again, have Menace, which is not, you know, perfect, you know, uh, when it comes to evasion, but it's pretty good. I mean, your opponents have to dedicate two creatures to it. And, of course, hey, uh, you also have the benefit of, well, 3-3 three is a good amount for every single time you cast an Instant It's basically a Lightning Bolt. But you know what? If you've got nine of them, you get Toughness and Power to be 9-9 nine, nine until end of turn. That means if you're swinging with your entire army of Wraiths, right? I guess if you have just, let's say, nine, right? Nine or more. Let's say you have nine. And you swing with nine of them, and you've got nine power for each of them. You're hitting for, what, 81 total damage? My goodness. So, yeah, this can be incredibly impactful. Of course, keep in mind that, obviously, your commander is a Wraith itself. So, although it's only a 4-3, once you hit that requirement, which, of course, you can do quite quickly with the right build, you can, obviously, hit incredibly hard with your commander. I mean, becoming, okay, basically, what, a three-shot KO. But, yeah, there are ways, of course, to make it into a one-shot KO. Even, we'll talk about one of those here in a little bit yeah i love the design of this commander like nazgul tribal kind of i mean i guess wraith tribal basically right but my goodness this is powerful this is flavorful this seems to be a lot of fun and also yeah i, I told you i'd get back to it here in a little bit yeah the wraiths you control protection from ring bears very flavorful but also that's just kind of funny if your opponent i mean obviously if you're playing like standard and whatnot or, or you know uh, another format that utilizes maybe uh, Tempt with the Ring more often, then sure. But uh, hey, if it just happens to be played in a commander game against you and someone's like, I've got a ring bear. And you're like, great, cool. My race have protection from it. Thank you. So yeah, it can be quite funny as well with this. Yeah, overall, just a really cool design. Again, I really hope this one's actually legitimate because this is exactly what I was hoping for for a Nazgul tribal commander or whatever, you know, whatever we're calling it essentially. But yeah, very exciting. Very cool. Again, take everything I say with a grain of salt because this might be fake, but it seems to me to be pretty real. So yeah, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below for the cards I'm talking about in this episode. But maybe don't consider picking up some of those cards until this section confirmed, unless you're very, very convinced like I am. And also, again, a reminder, we're going to be going through the budget buys on this episode. The cards that are less than $1, any price your picks, cards that are more than $1, let's start things off with the budget buys. And there's a lot, a lot of fantastic cards that work very well with this one. Yeah, a lot of great instants and sorceries. Just a spell slinger deck all around. Yeah, of course, Opt is going to be a great one. Instant for a single blue mana, scry one, draw a card. So card selection, followed up by card advantage. This is a great cantrip. And of course, low to the ground cantrips like this one are going to be so impactful in a deck like this. Yeah, cast it for one mana, make a 3-3 three, three again. Basically, lightning bolt. You get a 3-3 three, three in play for one mana. Awesome, which again has the potential to be three times lightning bolt with three, you know, times three with the nine nine. You know what I mean? 
Regardless, having a lot of cantrips in this deck can keep your hand chock full of more and more spells to cast spell after spell after spell. To, I mean, you could even surprisingly turn it into, you know, all your creatures into nine nines, essentially. You're swinging with seven. You got some mana up. Your opponent's like, ah, oh, they probably don't have two. And then you go boom, boom, two. Take a ton of damage that you just let through. So, yeah, absolutely crazy and so impactful. Moving on, Distortion Strike. Yet another great spell. Sorcery for a single blue mana. Low to the ground again. Just one blue mana. And here's the thing. Target creature gets plus one plus, one, plus, one plus zero until on turn gets... And it basically can't be blocked. Goodness gracious. Don't want to stumble over that. Unblockable. Plus one plus zero. There we go. On top of that, rebound. So, again, you've got an unblockable creature with basically any of the creatures you want. Probably your commander. And then on top of that, you get to recast this for free at the beginning of your next upkeep. Again, so just one mana... This equals six total power across two bodies, which again has the potential to be, what, 18 power basically again? Two creatures for the price of one. Yes, yeah, sign me up for that. So yeah, rebound is definitely something to consider. Also consider jumpstart, radical idea, a card like this. Draw a card for two mana. You can jumpstart it by discarding a card from your hand and also paying its cost from your graveyard, recasting it there. Again, two for the price of one. Definitely a great Radical idea. And of course, I will talk about some ways to make this cost even less. Moving on. Deep Analysis, a great card. Target player draws two cards. Sorcery for four mana. Its flashback cost is even less, though. Pay one and a blue. Pay three life. So recast this from your graveyard. Yeah, a great way to keep your hand chock full. Three life is nothing for two cards. And again, although the, you know, front side, the front side. <laughs> when it's in your hand, it costs four. It's in your graveyard, it costs two. We can make that cost even less. And of course, there are other cards out there. Some that I forgot to actually even put in this that, you know, maybe untap your lands when you cast them like an unwind. Yeah, ways to essentially say, you know what? I'm not even paying for this, but I'm not even paying for this effect. I'm not even paying for the 3-3 three, three menace creature that I'm getting into play. Moving on, one that can be incredible. And if you've got a good amount of these in this deck and you're set up properly, my goodness, the amount of pain that you can inflict, the amount of just creatures you're going to play in absolutely no time, call to mind a very simple, ineffective card, Sorcerer for two and a blue. Return target, instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Note that this does not exile. There are other recursion effects that do exile. This one does not, and that is huge. Because if you've got two of these, well, not two copies of this because you're in your commander and it's singleton, if you've got two cards like this that do the exact same thing, and maybe you've got some cost reducers in play, so maybe you're just paying a single blue for this, hey, just pay a blue mana, get the other one back. Pay a blue mana, get the other one back. Play a blue mana, get the other one back. Yeah, you might not be doing anything. You're just spinning your wheels, but you're getting those cast triggers, those basically magecraft triggers like your commander has to make creature after creature after creature make an army in absolutely no time. So yeah, there you go. Moving on. Speaking of cost reduction, Baral is finally budget-friendly with its latest reprint. A 1-3 human wizard for two mana. In source spells, you cast cost one less to cast. That is massive. Again, yeah, you're going to have a lot of one mana cantrips, but you're also going to want to utilize other cards too. And when you have those kinds of cards, reducing their cost is massive. Does so much work for you. And again, once you're kind of set up with that call to mind kind of strategy as well, bringing back cards out of your graveyard, basically regrowth type effects, do it again and again and again. On top of that, Baral has whenever a spell you control counters a spell, you may discard it. You may draw a card if you do discard a card. Basically, free, uh, not rummaging, looting. There we go. We got there. Free looting every single time you counter a spell, too. Yeah, you're in blue. You're going to counter things. Also, Arcane Melee. This one can be risky, but I definitely urge you to consider it. Chamber for five mana. Insular spells cost two less. That is massive. The thing is, this obviously helps your opponents out as well. That being said, with the amount of instant sorceries you're going to be casting, again, spell slinger type strategy, you're going to be casting a ton and getting the most advantage out of this. Again, with that call to mind kind of strategy, uh, hey, this automatically reduces that down to one. And again, if you get two of those, just go one mana, one mana, one mana, one mana, again and again and again, casting spell after spell after spell, getting triggers everywhere. And speaking of triggers everywhere, yeah, Murmuring Mystic. There are other effects like your commander that are incredible. A 1-5 human wizard. Whenever you cast in source spell, you get a 1-1 one, one blue bird. Illusion creature token with flying. You can make a ton, a ton of evasive flyers in absolutely no time with something like this. Speaking of which, the original, the OG, Talrin Sky Summoner. 2-2 two, two, Morphork Wizard. Whenever you cast in source sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two, two, blue drake creature token with flying. Yeah. Again, lower to the ground than your actual commander. Getting more of these in play, though, can be fantastic. Again, the more spells you cast, the more benefits you get out of it. Not just with wraiths, yes, which can become absolutely massive, 
but also yeah just make giant armies with all these different kind of creatures that you can really take advantage of and again two two flyers aren't nothing i mean that's like basically you know as if our commander is a shock for each cast right this basically or sorry a lightning bolt this is basically a shock there you go absolutely incredible and of course there are ways to bump your entire army if you really want to Moving on though, let's go to the pricier picks and one that I really, really, really want to highlight because it's hilarious. Here we go. Tainted Strike. This is a one-shot KO. One shot set properly and very easily with any of your rates. Any of your rates. Any of them. Target creature gets plus one zero and gains infect until of turn. Again, once you get to nine rates, or once you get to cast, you know, a spell and you hit nine rates, right? There you go. All your rates get nine power. Nine. They also have Menace, so they're hard to block. And when one of them's getting through, you're like, uh, before combat damage is assigned, uh, this one gets plus one zero and has Infect, meaning it has 10 power. And when it hits that player, which it's going to, that player loses the game because they've got 10 Poison Counters. So yeah, on top of this being a low to the ground, again, one mana instant speed spell, which makes you yet another Wraith, it is a one-shot KO on any of your Wraiths once you're set up properly. Next up. Take advantage of your race coming into play even more dire undercurrents and enchantment for three demir demir whenever a blue creature comes into play under your control you may have target player draw a card so yes this is not trigger off of your commander's trigger again your commander's making black race that being said if you've got say tolerant in play or murmuring mystic you're making blue creatures too cool so get more and more triggers off of this yeah you're gonna be drawing cards unless you're trying to mill someone out you're gonna be the one drawing cards for every single spell you cast essentially again basically cantripping i guess i should say Every single instant source you're casting, basically can tripping. On top of that, on the other end of things, brutal. Whenever a black creature comes in a play under control, you may have target player discard a card. So again, those wraiths that you're making are black, and they are gonna have your opponents have no hands at all. Instant speed discard essentially. Hey, yeah, I'll cast my uh, you know, opt instant speed, you know, scrap and draw a card. Cool, I get a wraith. Awesome. Oh, uh, and you're gonna discard a card. I'll do that again and again and again just taking out everyone else's hands. They're gonna have absolutely no chance once you are set up with this. Speaking of which, Kinder Discovery, an incredible card for a deck like this. Enchantment, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, Um, Wraith. When a creature controls the chosen type, enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. Okay, so again, it's very easy for you to just cast instant sorceries. Again, we've got tons of ways to do that very effectively, very efficiently especially with cost reduction. So do that again and again, make more race, draw a ton of cards when they come to play. Again, it doesn't specify non-token and then swing out with your non-token creatures, you know, your giant nine, nine race and uh, yeah, draw a ton of cards from that as well. I didn't I just said nine token, I meant race. You know what I meant. Moving on, Archmage Emeritus, yet another way to generate absurd amounts of card advantage with this deck. Whenever you cast or copy an insert spell, draw a card. Very simple, very effective, a great way to keep your hand chock full of just delicious instants and sorceries. And then we've got Sedge Mort Witch. Yeah, you might have thought we were done with generating creature tokens, but we're nowhere near done with it just yet because the more and more effects like this we have in play, the more impactful each one of our spells becomes. This one has Ward Pay 3 Life. That's nice. It's got Menace itself. Also nice. Most importantly, though, whenever you cast your copy and source spell, you get a 1 1 black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. So you can gain a good amount of life with this, but more importantly, hey, uh, yeah, just get a good army with this when you're casting spells. And yes, this also, you know, pairs very well dire undercurrents again, making creatures to make players discard cards. Next up, we got Deca Fractal Theorist. I remember when this was very budget friendly, and then a certain commander came out and they're like, ah, never mind, no one, no more. 3-3, three, three, Human Wizard, Magecraft. Whenever you cast your copy and source spell, create a 0-0 zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token. You get X counters on it, X that spells made of value. You can also make a token unblockable. That's nice. But yeah. Every single time you're casting those spells again, especially the bigger ones, maybe you got that cost reduction going. You're making, instead of just one ones, you're making three threes or four fours. This can just get out of control in absolutely no time. And again, hey, dire undercurrents or, yeah, yeah I mean, those kind of cards. When you're getting creatures coming to play, draw some cards. Again, this is a blue, green and blue fractal creature token. Moving on, Dose Hunter Perfection. 5-4 Insect Horror with flying. Whenever you cast in Sorcery Spell, you get a 1-1 one, one blue Human Wizard creature token on the battlefield. Then if you control three or more, Wizards, you transform it. They'll take no time at all. It flips over to a 6-5 Flyer that gives Wizards you control plus two plus one and have flying. And whenever you cast in Sorcery, you still get a 1-1 one, one Human. So basically, hey, a 3-2 generating engine of flying Wizards. My goodness. Yeah, this can pair really well with your commander as well. Your army, again, can be just so impactful, can be so deadly, can be, you know, menacing, can be flying. 
you can go in a lot of different directions with this next up melodic summonings this helps out in a lot of different ways first of all it's kind of got that deca fractal theorist thing whenever you cast sense or sorcery spell you get an xx colors construct artifact creature shogun where x that spells converting man cost so again the bigger the spell that you cast the bigger the creature is but also by paying three blue blue and exiling it you return all instant source cards from your graveyard to your hand activate only if you control six more artifacts very easy to get to six artifacts because again this makes artifacts so therefore hey cast like six spells there you go get all those instant sorceries back out of your graveyard back in your hand that is huge not just for card advantage but basically again hey another supply of cards to cast again and again and again to trigger your commander and all the other awesome things and oh gosh i wish this would ever be budget friendly because it's hilarious but it probably never will be shark typhoon enchantment whatever cast a non-creature spell so this counts anything essentially except for creatures so you know outside of your instant sorceries this also triggers off other enchantments artifacts planeswalkers even battles anything essentially there you go hey make a xx blue shark creature token with flying because of course sharks fly where x is that spells converted mana cost so again like melodic summings but even better with those flyers you could also cycle away if you really want to just make a singular one but yeah i recommend getting into play and doing some crazy things and uh speaking of crazy things if you've got all these kind of token generators maybe consider masked wood nexus it says creatures you control are every creature type the same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that are on the battlefield and this also can make a 2-2 blue shaped for creature on a changeling now why am i recommending this well again if you have all these other ways to make a ton of creature tokens right you've got a massive army of just a lot of different things this says well now they're all wraiths as well they all are wraiths and because of that every single time you hit nine wraiths which you're going to because you already would have just with your commander but now you've got all the other ways to make you know creature tokens like tall ran murmuring mystic shark typhoon all these hey uh you just have a ton of creatures in play they're all wraiths you cast one insert of sorcery. Now all those creatures have base power and toughness nine nine. Again, the murmuring mystic, tiny little one ones, one one flyers are now nine nines. All of them become massive. Your fractals get even bigger because again, fractals have counters on them. Yeah, if you've got enough of these token generators in play, I would definitely recommend Masquerade Nexus. At the very least, again, this is just a way to say, okay, I'll pay three mana, make a two two changeling, which also is a wraith, so that when I actually, you know, get to that ninth one. I can also make this into a 9 9 with base power on top of it. So, there's some crazy things you can do. Definitely recommend. I love this card. But, yeah, overall, a very exciting, brand new potential commander. Again, I need to reiterate that for everyone out there. This is a leak. It has not been officially confirmed, but I really, really hope that this is an actual card because it's so cool. Again, like Nazgul Race Tribal, really cool things can be done. Again, very powerful again making a 3-3 every single time you cast sensor source but it's basically a lightning bolt worth of damage and then potentially three times that amount once you get to that amount of wraiths so some really exciting things can be done with this one let me know in the comments below if you think this one's real i definitely do again these images seem very convincing but in the past there have been fakes but there's been a lot of other ones more so that are actually real and uh yeah things seem pretty leaky at wizards so goodness wizards get get it all together come on just 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 figure it out because um yeah, yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of embarrassing, just a little bit. Anyways, make sure you stay tuned for even more quick takes and spoilers, and maybe even other leaks coming up. And with that, this episode is coming to a close, so let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.